Hello, what's up guys? Eman from Peso Smart PH here. Welcome sa pinabagong episode. Shout out to the podcast listeners as well. I appreciate you all. Today, we're gonna talk about some PSE news, market news, and IPO updates. Before we get into that, I just wanna thank everyone kasi nahit na natin yung 1.4k subscribers sa YouTube. I really appreciate the support and yeah, thank you, thank you talaga. And sa mga podcast listeners na hindi pa nag-check out yung YouTube channel ko, punta lang kayo sa youtube.com forward slash pesosmartph. And eto naman guys, tinan nyo. Ang dami pang hindi subscribe doon, nanonood palagi ng mga videos ko sa YouTube. So yeah, huwag nyo kalimutan i-hit yung subscribe button and syempre yung notification bell na rin para wala kayo ma-miss out sa mga videos na ina-upload ko twice a week yan every Monday and Friday. First up sa agenda natin today is Julia Barreto at Gerald Anderson umami na. Joke lang, joke lang. Siyempre hindi natin pag-uusapan yan dito sa channel kasi hindi naman tayo showbiz channel, no? Personal finance channel tayo and investing channel. Anyway, first up yung pag-uusapan natin is yung IPO ni Mond Nissin which will happen this year. So itong article na to ay sa sulat ng March 5 galing sa Business World. Ang headline sabi, Mondnesin files for record-breaking Philippine IPO. So yeah, the maker of Lucky Me, no? So puro pansit kanton yung product sila. And syempre meron silang mga snacks, mga biscuits. Uh, trip ko nga rin yung biscuits nila, no? Yung Nissin Wafer. So yeah, sobrang sarap nun. And yeah, mag-initial public offering sila. So up to 63 billion pesos yung kanilang ma-raise dito sa IPO na ito. And 1.3 billion US dollars yung katumbas niyan. So so far this could be the biggest first time share sale ng Philippines. Yung mga nauna is back in 2016 pa which was Shell. And then yung second one naman is last year yung Converge. So sa ngayon, they're planning to sell like 3.6 billion shares. So yung maximum price is 17.50 pesos. This is not final yet kasi kaka-apply pa lang nito sa SEC and with PSE. So ma-determine pa yan in the next couple of weeks or months depende kung kailan sila magsiset ng date ng IPO. So kapag natupad itong 3.6 billion shares, Nasa 17.50 pesos per share. Ito na yung pinakamalaking nga na magiging IPO sa Philippines. 1.3 billion US dollars. So, sobrang laking pera. And if in exercise sila yung over allotment, magkakaroon pa ng additional 540 million shares. And it will raise up to 72.5 billion pesos. So yung mga sikat na products ng Mondesen is yung mga pansit kanton nga ng Lucky Me and Skyflakes and then yung Nissin Biscuits na na-mention ko earlier. Sa kanila din yung Dutch Mill and Mamacitas Oyster Sauce. So lahat itong products ito is alam ko and I'm pretty sure na kayo din familiar kayo sa mga products ni Nissin. And maganda rin naman yung numbers no nung company. So marami silang benta last year kasi nga ba diba, pag may crisis uh, sila yung parang mas tinatangkilik ng mga tao since madali lang lutuin yung mga products nila. So, and kapag ka, for example, merong earthquake, merong nasalanta ng typhoon, syempre yung parang unang may isip mo na ibigay dun sa mga naapektuhan na pamilya, na mga tao, is like ganito, mas madali siyang lutuin instant noodles, right? And mga biscuits, sky flakes, at least uh, makakain agad nila, no? at that moment and yun yung mga biscuits nga is hindi naman syempre kailangan lutuin so at least magkakaroon ng laman yung chan nila and kung titingin nyo dito yung company sales of instant noodles biscuits yogurt drinks and oyster sauce accounted for 68% 30.5% 73.2% and 56% of retail sales market share in the Philippines so ang laking market share niyan para sa mga industries na ito and para sa mga products na ito. And ang sabi ko nga, kahit nung pandemic, tumaas pa yung sales ni Mond Nissen. So I truly believe na isa to sa magiging magandang stocks na i-hold sa PSE. But yeah, we, we just have to wait and see kung paano ba ito magpa-pan out no in the future. 
but in my opinion personal opinion i think it's gonna be a good stock to hold and since solid yung kanilang income i think magbibigay ito ng dividends consistently and syempre isa yun sa mga pinaka gusto kong stocks no? mga dividend paying stocks additionally sa kanila din pala yung corn foods so sila yung nagpaproduce ng alternative protein or meat so pwede to sa mga vegetarian sa mga vegan so makakain ka pa rin ng protein even though hindi actual meat no hindi beef hindi pork hindi chicken yung content ng kanilang product so ayun guys let me know sa comment section down below kung interested din kayo bumili ng stocks ni Mond Nissin in the future kapag ka na set na yung date ng kanilang IPO next na pag-usapan natin is yung IPO naman ni Double Dragon Reit so na pag set na sila ng kanilang final price this article is galing ulit sa business world yung kanilang Headline, sabi Double Dragon Reit sets final IPO price at 2.25 pesos per share. So that's pretty cheap no compared to Arit since medyo mataas din yung unang prices ni Arit and medyo tumaas rin yung prices since na-drive ng market pataas yung sentiment is maganda. But in Double Dragon's case, yeah, medyo cheap lang no medyo mababal yung price ng kanilang Reit. So ito na notify na nga no si PSE na yung final offer price ng kanilang initial public offering. Yung stock code nito is DDMPR na higing 2.25 pesos per share nga yan. So yung may higing total shares na malilis sa PSC is 17.83 billion common shares. That is quite a lot. And then yung mahalaga dito is yung offer period which will run from March 10 to 16. So that's gonna be next week na. And now the tentative date para mag-debut itong si DDMPR sa PSE is on March 23. FYI lang guys, so this is gonna be the second real estate investment trust na malilist nga sa PSE. The first one which was REIT last year, yun na raise nila is 13.6 billion pesos sa kanilang IPO. And ito medyo old news lang back in November sabi ng company yung majority ng proceeds na makukuha nila dito sa IPO would be poured into the Central Hub Industrial Centers Incorporated. That's gonna be it for this one guys. So at least na set na yung final price para sa kanilang IPO next week. I think I'm gonna buy some. Siguro yung budget ko is around 8k to 10k for this one. Medyo mura lang naman. 2.25 lang per share. So kayang kayang bumili. Next one natin pag-uusapan is yung pag-suspend sa trading ni Abra Mining Corporation. Another article na galing kay Business World, ang sabi nila, PSE suspends trading of Abra Mining shares. So ito, no, nung Thursday pa, sinuspend ni PSE yung pag-trade kay Abra Mining and Industrial Corporation. So yung nalaman nila is yung market operator found to be selling stocks beyond the number of its listed shares. So, as we all know, that is not right. And hindi pwede yun. Along with the Philippine Depository and Trust Corporation, the exchange found the mining company to have violated three rules based on its disclosure and reports. The number of Abra Minings fully paid, issued, and outstanding shares exceeded its listed shares, violating a PC guideline that requires all fully paid issues and outstanding shares to be listed. Lodged PDTC shares are also more than the company's listed shares. All lodge securities for trading with the PDTC should have been approved first. So medyo shady business, no? Then, abermining shares with the PDTC are also more than above the number of issued and outstanding shares in the company's audited financial statements. Shares that have not been accounted for are being traded, which is a violation of the revised corporation code. And thus, dahil nga do na suspend yung trading ng kanilang stocks. And ito, ang sabi ng mga analysts daw, uh, they expect Abra Mining to correct the reported error. Siyempre kasi, ano mangyayari sa mga investors sila kapag ka hindi nag-resume yung trading ng stocks? And I'm pretty sure na medyo bababa yung stock prices nila magpa-plummet ito kapag ka nag-resume na yung trading ng kanilang stocks eh. Ito nga, this is not a good sentiment for everyone sa entirety 
ng uh, market kung sino mang nag-invest, kung sino mang nagtitrade dyan. So, yeah. So, ito. Tingnan natin ng konti, no? Kung ano ba yung Abra Mining and Industrial Corporation. As their name suggests, yung sector nila is mining and oil. So, medyo tagal na rin silang company, no? September 28, 1964 pa. Na incorporate yung kanilang company. So, kung titingnan nyo yung stock data. So, yeah. Suspended siya. Common share. Then, yung 52-week high niya is 0.013. 52-week low is 0.00007. So, recently lang, medyo tumaas yung stock prices niya. So, for the longest time, buong 2020 halos, wala chill lang siya dito sa price range na to. And before the year ended, yan, medyo tumataas na siya ng konti. Then ngayon January lang, recently. So, almost two months ago. Yan, sobra tumaas yung prices niya. And then of course, nag-market correction. Bumaba ng konti and yan, yung trend niya is medyo pababa na ulit. Dito medyo tumaas lang ng konti kahit papano but pretty sure that this will go down again kapag naayos na nila yung mga errors daw na nangyari kung hindi man yung shady or hindi kung intentional or hindi but yeah nakikita natin but yeah prediction ko personally bababa yan kasi uh, your stock being suspended is not really a good sign so now we just have to wait and see kung ano mangyayari Also, silipin natin yung financial reports nila. I'm not sure kung bakit maraming ang bumibili sa stocks nila. But as you can see here, December 31, 2019, as of. Yung earnings nila is uh, non-existent. So, ang medyo weird pa dito is walang gross revenue and walang gross expense. Walang, walang ibang data. No? So, not sure bakit inaalaw yun ng PSE or like ng SEC kasi publicly traded company guys so dapat lahat is naka disclose sa public di ba paano mag-invest sa isang company kung di mo alam yun nangyayari kung ano yung performance ng company financially so that's a bit weird and then currently hindi pa rin sila kumikita so lugi lugi pa rin sila noong 2020 and same thing lang noong 2020 19. Mas malaki pa nga yung lugi nila. So, nasa 2.3 million pesos compared to 240k lang. So, ang weird talaga, no? Yung stock mo is like tumatas tapos hindi ka naman kumikita. I'm, I'm not sure why that's happening. Siguro, pinaglalaroan lang ng mga traders, no? Yung stock na to. And, yeah. Well, good for them kung kumikita sila. But, uh, majority, I think, they'll lose money kapag galik na FOMO sila. Uy! May stock na sobrang tumataas, di ba? Bibilin ko yan. And then, biglang, ah, magpa-plummet. Kasi ito, nasuspend nga. Nagkaroon ng bad news or whatever. And then, kapag nag-dip yung prices, ah, sige, natatakot na ako. Mawawala na akong pera. O, oh, sige, bibenta ko na ngayon. Stop loss na ako. Anyway, move forward na tayo. So, si Cebu Pacific or Cebu Air Incorporated is nangutang na ulit, no? So, di ba, nag nga sila ng capital, ng konting capital dito sa kanilang stock rights offering and kung hindi mo pa na-check out yung episode ko about that click mo lang ito yan may link dyan so hindi pa rin enough yun no para like mafanda ng tama and makapagbayad sila uh, sa mga iba pa nilang utang na you know June na uh, at this period again galing kay Business World itong article Cebu Pacific tops local banks for 16 billion pesos loan And ayan, yung board nga nila is nag-approve ng 16 billion 10-year loan from local banks. So yung mga utangan nila is Development Bank of the Philippines or DBP and then Lang Bank of the Philippines. And then yung mga private banks na they're in partnership with is Asia United Bank Corporation, Bank of the Philippine Islands, Metropolitan Bank and Trust Company, and Union Bank of the Philippines. So, ang rational nila dito is the loan will also provide a cushion against unexpected working capital requirements that may stem from fuel price and foreign exchange rate volatility. So, basically, gamitin nila itong pera na ito para sa mga capital expenditures sila and kung ano-ano pa ang mga corporate purposes and para yun nga, mag-continue pa yung business to keep the business running 
para hindi sila ma bankrupt and you know close on business they don't want that and that's not really good for anybody kasi marami rin silang employees so mawawala ng trabaho yung mga taong yun of course there were some na that were laid off so that's really sad but yeah uh, they don't want to continue laying off people kasi yun din yung investment nila or like yun yung capital nila eh, diba like yun yung puhunan nila yung mga tao kasi kung wala sila wala yung mga workers the business won't work and yeah, the commercial airline industry was hit hard by the pandemic. Cebu Pacific currently operates less than a quarter of its pre-pandemic network at 32 domestic destinations as it runs half of its 73 aircrafts. Lahat naman talaga ng business is affected nitong COVID-19 o no? nitong pandemic. If you can remember si Warren Buffett nga, binenta niya lahat ng kanyang airline stocks back when the pandemic started. He thinks na mahirapan talaga makabalik yung mga airline companies no, sa kanilang pre-pandemic performance. And of course, the man is almost always right. And yun, kita nga natin hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin talaga fully recovered yung airline industry. It's gonna take a while but we're gonna get there, no? And I hope it happens sooner than later. But yeah, uh, with all the vaccines and such, hopefully, siguro by next year or the next two years, uh, maging okay na ulit yung airline industry kasi personally meron akong Cebu Air Stocks no? so syempre ayaw naman natin na you know mag plummet lang ng pababa ng pababa yung stock prices and hindi na makarecover ever diba we don't want that and syempre gusto ko naman makapag-travel domestically ulit diba so sino ba namang may ayaw but yeah for now ito na yung reality natin so just have to move forward kahit man sobrang bagal nyan at least merong progress last but not the least is galing ulit sa business world yung Cebu Land Masters Incorporated is mag expand sa 4 cities in Visayas and Mindanao so yan thank you again kay business world sa mga gandang articles no so si CLI meron din tayo nyan Konting shares lang yung nabili natin but magandang dividends yun yung binibigay niya. So yung economic housing nila, so yeah, yung medyo murang housing nila. Yung brand na ito is mag-expand sa apat na cities, sa Visayas and Mindanao. Since medyo uh, nag-spike yung demand uh, nitong pandemic sa mga you know, affordable housing. So yung launch nila is Casamira Community in Dumaguete this month. Magkakaroon din yan sa Ormoc. Puerto Princesa and Davao City within this year. And yung CLI CEO na si Jose R. Soberano III, ang sabi niya, many new residential seekers met that need by purchasing Casamira homes. As demand in other parts of the region continues to be largely unmet, we've made it our mission to roll out more Casamira projects in more Visman cities to fill that gap. The Casamir brand made up for 16% of CLI's record reservation sales worth of 14.23 billion pesos during the height of the health crisis last year, higher than its usual contribution of 30%. So yung Casamira, well, taga Luzon naman ako, so I won't be really, you know, seeing this or like experiencing this. But yeah, magkaroon sila ng clubhouse, may multi-purpose halls, may chapel, may swimming pool basketball court and children's playground uh, but syempre uh, this should be like highly regulated since uh, majority pa rin naman ng population sa Philippines is wala pa rin vaccine and yeah at least kapag nag-open itong mga to uh, safe yung residents sila and syempre yung mga ano, kids and uh, senior citizens okay and then yung costs yung Casamira communities with a combined development cost of 10.24 billion pesos sa Cebu, Bacolod, Cagayan, De Oro, Iloilo, and Negros Oriental. So dahil sa news na to, yung uh, stock prices ni CLI rose by 2.97% noong Friday, nag-close siya at 5.5 pesos per share. Kita nyo naman no, kung paano mag-react yung stock market sa isang magandang news. So yeah, mahirap talaga maging trader, no? So, dapat uh, sobrang composed mo and your emotions mo is always on check. But yeah, personally, kaya nga hindi ko ginagawa yun is, yeah, medyo matrabaho siya and talagang daily grind siya. So for now, I'm still sticking to my original strategy which is buying stocks, dividend-paying stocks na undervalued at the moment and yeah, 
in the future I'm gonna sell it kapag ka sobrang tumas yung stock prices and kapag ka nabigyan ako ng maraming dividends. Alright, we are heading towards the end of this episode. Silipin natin yung mga sources for today's video. Of course, andyan si Business World. Kita nyo naman kanina. Lahat ng mga articles na dinascuss natin is galing sa kanila. PSE Edge and Jiffy. Lahat ng mga links niyan is matatagpuan sa description sa baba. And now, before we end, we have a quote galing kay Gary Vaynerchuk. Ang sabi niya, you never on your deathbed are thrilled that you listen to everybody else. So yeah, always listen to yourself. No? Unahin mo palagi kung anong gusto mo, hindi yung gusto ng iba. If you do that, you'll be happier and magkaroon ka ng mas maraming freedom. No? Kasi alam mo na talagang gusto mo yung ginagawa mo. Alright, that's gonna be it. And then natin episode here, guys. Sana may natutunan kayo. And if umabot kayo at the end of this episode, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Huwag mong kalimutan smash yung like button kasi sobrang nakakatulong yun sa algorithm ni YouTube. If hindi mo pa nagagawa, now's a good time to subscribe and ring notification bell para wala ko ma-miss out sa mga uploads ko every Monday and Friday. Thanks again for watching everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you all in the next episode. Always remember, be passive smart.